What's up fellow Tubians, how goes it? Today we're having a look at HP's Laptop 14. Yes, that's what it's called. It's not to be confused with HP's Pavilion 14. That is an entirely separate series of lineups. This is a budget or entry level productivity laptop. So the configuration we have here today is rocking Intel's Core i5 1135G7 processor, eight gigabytes of RAM, 512 GB of storage via SSD. We also have Intel's Iris Xe graphics powering this thing. Additionally, we do have Wi-Fi 6 as well as Bluetooth 5 on board. And yes, this is a 14 inch full HD display. Yep, it's running Windows 11. Today, we're gonna see if this is the right laptop for you, what HP got right with it, where they could have done better, and ultimately help you make a decision, hopefully. As always, if you enjoy the content, hit that like button, sub to my channel, it genuinely helps me grow. And by the way, feel free to follow me on Instagram, I'll leave a link in the video description below. Starting off with a real quick unboxing experience, the creativity here is off the charts. It's literally a cardboard box with HP's most basic branding slapped onto it. Once you proceed to remove that content seal itself and actually open the box, inside of course, firstly you'll find the laptop and a ton of protective packaging. Once you get past all that protective stuff, here it is in all its glory, but more on that in a quick minute. Past that, you have a standard 45 watt charging adapter, and it makes sense that it's not a USB-C adapter given that it's in the budget range category, so that's quite excusable. Past that, of course, you have a standard wall outlet charging cable piece, and finally the quick start warranty regulation information in this nice little bundle. In terms of design, surprisingly, the HP Laptop 14 is more sturdy and less flex prone than its 15 inch brethren. It does still use a full hard TPU build over here or plastic if you will. Now, it's worth noting this laptop has a weight of approximately 3.2 pounds, making it slightly heavier than the average 14 inch laptop, but it's not necessarily noticeable. It's worth noting when you come to the top side of this laptop, like I mentioned, you have a full plastic surface. It's smooth, there's no particular texture, still feels nice though. And in the dead center, you have a nice nice reflective HP logo. The rear side of this laptop is pretty much a flat slab of plastic. It's where the back side of the hinge is hosted. But it's really when you make your way to the side of the laptop, things get more interesting. So on one side, you have the standard DC charging port. You also have a HDMI 1.4B port. You have two USB 3A ports. You also have a USB Type-C port. Unfortunately, it's not Thunderbolt 4. Past that, you'll also notice you have the good old headphone jack. On the other side, you have a full-sized SD card reader, which is actually a very nice touch by HP. It's not frequently found in this category of laptops. Making your way to the bottom side of this laptop, it's pretty much a standard bottom, so you have a full plastic finish, two rubber grips. You'll also notice in the center, you do have a large air intake vent. This is the only air intake vent, so please, for goodness sake, do not block this. Otherwise, you'll very quickly find yourself on the YouTube comment section whining about how hot this machine gets. As soon as you unfold this laptop, you are greeted by a reasonable amount of palm rest space. And although it is a plastic inner chassis, the color gives it the false perception of having a metallic finish. Now, when you come to the trackpad, it is relatively small in terms of its surface area, but I have to say it's much better than the 15 inch variant of this laptop. There is considerably less flex on this trackpad. Despite having a plastic finish, it doesn't necessarily feel cheap or finicky. In fact, the clicks are relatively tactile and the calibration is pretty much respectable as well. Making our way to the keyboard, Look, there's just no other way to say it. This is quite frankly, a pretty miserable keyboard. So the keycaps are about as fragile as our current global supply chain. They're just finicky and they feel like they're gonna fall off any given second, even if they're not. Now the typing experience can be best described as literally breaking paper thin ice. It's inconsistent and it's not very comfortable. Overall, this is just not a great keyboard. And to make matters worse, HP continues not to provide any sort of backlighting on this keyboard. And I know some of you might say, I don't actually need that feature. It's not about that. The fact is most other budget laptops in this price range do in fact provide backlighting at this point in time. Now to compensate for this to some extent, HP does provide a dedicated fingerprint reader, which you often don't find on many other budget laptops. But overall, this keyboard is, is probably the worst trait of this machine. Right past the keyboard, you'll notice you have a long speaker grill. This is a dual speaker setup and it is top firing. I'll do a sound test later on in the video. 
Also past that, you'll notice you have the actual hinge itself. This is a single mechanism hinge and it's pretty sturdy. There's very little wobble. It's not excessively tight either. It should definitely last for the years to come as long as you don't abuse the hinge. From a display fitting perspective, the HP Laptop 14 has a relatively thick chin with the HP branding. Now the bezels themselves are actually very narrow and more or less in line with modern day standards. You also have a relatively thick forehead, but to be fair, it does host the dual array microphone setup as well as the 720p webcam. In terms of the webcam quality, it's pretty mediocre as you'd expect, but to be fair, laptops that cost twice as much still provide worse webcams, so it's quite forgivable. In terms of display quality, keeping in mind this is essentially a entry level or budget laptop, the display is more or less what I expected it to be. So you do have a 14 inch screen here with a resolution of 1920 by 1080 or full HD if you will. It is a IPS panel which means you do have fantastic viewing angles on here. You do have a standard 60 hertz refresh rate as well and yes this is not a anti-glitter screen so you'll get a fair bit of glare. Now in terms of color quality you have a 45% NTSU rating or approximately 56% sRGB so colors aren't going to look very lively nor are they going to be super vivid. If you are a creative user who's heavily dependent on high degree of color accuracy this display will not cut it for you but aside from that it's quite passable. The brightness is on the underwhelming side at just 250 nits. It's going to be okay in most indoor settings but the minute it gets too bright whether it's indoor or outdoor you'll notice that right away the brightness just can't compensate for the external glare and it becomes a very difficult experience to actually use this laptop. Performance on this machine is actually very respectable. So you do have Intel's 11th gen i5 chip on board here. And despite only having eight gigabytes of RAM, I find that most day-to-day -day tasks like web browsing or let's say word processing feel as snappy as possible. But even more demanding tasks like video editing, for example, in my case, I turned it away all the way up to 4K are still viable despite the limited amount of RAM you have on here. Yes, there is the occasional frame drop. And yes, it can be a bit of a choppy experience at that level, but it's still very much viable. Anything lower than that will work even better. Now past that, in terms of gaming, games like GTA 5 were able to run at medium settings with a steady 30 plus frames per second as long as the laptop is plugged in, which means this machine can definitely handle some low-end gaming. In the thermals department, under absolute peak load, this laptop can hit a surface temperature of about 45 degrees Celsius, making it pretty uncomfortably hot. However, more realistic high loads will yield you around the 39 degrees Celsius mark, which which is considerably more manageable. And under idle loads, you can go as little as 21 degrees Celsius. Now, with that said, the fan on here can also get quite loud. It can go all the way up to 47 decibels. However, that's only when you're doing stuff like gaming or video editing. Under more idle loads, it hardly goes on. And it's a pretty quiet laptop. Battery life on here is pretty disappointing. So we found under realistic test at 50% brightness, doing web browsing, using the speakers at about 40% volume, watching a little bit of videos and mixed use, we got right about 7.5 hours, which isn't at the bottom of the barrel, but it's nothing to write home about either. Now, in terms of sound quality, you do have a dual speaker setup. And like I mentioned, it is front firing or top firing, which makes for a decent sound experience. It's not anything groundbreaking, but for a budget laptop, it's pretty decent. Have a quick listen for yourself. Grew up in a place where they told you what to chase, told you how to run the race. Every move is on the page, but I didn't like their way. Had to fight and misbehave, had to find a way to change, had to leave to find my way. Caught up in a daydream, I be in my mind up there almost daily. It's how I pass time, no opinions safely. It's how I understand what I want in this place, see. Cause everybody wanna do bad things. What could go wrong? What fame brings my success is a finicky thing. And if you ain't sure, no, it'll never be. I don't Here's the verdict guys, priced at approximately $600 USD, the HP Laptop 14 is pretty much what I'd call your average general productivity laptop. Some of its biggest strengths include the fact that it has fantastic performance given its specifications, it's definitely above average. It also has a decent build quality. It is all plastic, but it's definitely improved compared to its predecessors. And you have a great selection of IO ports and a full-sized SD card reader is definitely a welcome bonus. Now, some things really holding this laptop back include its 
less than mediocre keyboard, which honestly is a disappointing experience to say the least. The battery life is definitely on the lower end over here and the display isn't anything to write home about either, but that's one of the more forgivable traits. Overall, I think if you are someone who's looking for a machine that can do general productivity with a little bit of intensive activities like the occasional video editing or even a little bit of light gaming, this machine can definitely handle it. On the other side, if you are someone who likes having a high quality trackpad or keyboard or needs a more color accurate display, you may want to look at other options in the market. As always, if you enjoyed this review, hit the like button, sub to my channel. By the way, if you're interested in purchasing this laptop, there is a link below. It helps fund the channel at no additional cost to you. Thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you in the next one.